and only 45 calories a serving. Good morning indeed. V8. Happening now. And this afternoon, we have thunderstorms popping up elsewhere around Texas. The thing is, they could head our way later tonight. We're going to talk more about that in just a bit. And it's a contentious race for City Council seat District 2. We're going to take a look at the endorsements for the candidates next. Click it or ticket law enforcement ramping up seat belt enforcement this weekend. Fines you could face for not buckling up. It's another pandemic effect. Chicken supplies are tight and that's driving up prices. Coming up what that means for your wings, cravings and your wallet. It is a bittersweet day here in KSAT 12. Our Paul Venema retiring after 47 years here. We're going to take a look at the well wishes coming from his friends at the courthouse. The News at 5 starts right now. Adam Kasky here with the latest on our radar. We don't have a lot of activity in and around San Antonio, mainly just a mixture of sun and clouds. You look elsewhere, that's where we have the showers and thunderstorms, especially off to the north. But here's the thing, this activity is likely to continue to develop and even organize in the coming hours. We're already starting to see a little bit of activity trying to sprout up around Kerrville, Fredericksburg, and even over Canyon Lake, just over the past couple of hours, we had one little shower quickly pass through. These have been very short-lived, even near Seguin into Gonzales and Lavaca counties. So far, they've been short-lived. I anticipate more development out here just east of town, especially because we've got a little boundary in place that's helping and trying to instigate some of those showers. Next, we look off to the west. Mexico and around Big Bend. We're watching those thunderstorms as they could organize and then affect our western counties in the hours ahead. In turn, we have that severe thunderstorm risk mainly west and north of San Antonio, but this is subject to change. OK, and I do see increasing storm chances as we go through the evening hours. Temperatures right now. 80s for most of us, 88 Floresville, we're for the most part in the 80s to right near 90 degrees and of course feeling that humidity. So some scattered showers and thunderstorms developing. I'm going to show you our future cast and talk more about our rain potential for the weekend coming up, Ursula. Thank you, Adam. The District 2 Council race, it's heating up on the east side. Yeah, incumbent Councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan is fending off one of her former staffers, Jalen McKee Rodriguez, in one of five council runoff elections. Several pastors endorsed Andrew Sullivan today, saying they were pledging their personal support for her and were not representing any organizations. Her opponent, Jalen McKee Rodriguez, has been gathering his own endorsements, which include groups like the Texas Organizing Project and high-profile figures like the Castro brothers. But the race is also getting attention for some accusations of homophobia. We'll have details about those allegations coming up for you tonight at 6. Just a reminder, early voting for the city's runoff election happening right now. More than 11,000 people have voted so far. Districts 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9 are all in a runoff. You can find a list of polling locations and hours right now on KSAT.com. Early voting ends on June 1st. Election day is Saturday, June 5th. In other news, this Friday evening, he is accused of punching and slapping a two-year-old. Now he's facing jail time. We have an update on the search for 20-year-old Christian Avila Martinez. He was arrested Wednesday after investigators had been looking for him about the past month. According to arrest records, the 20-year-old recorded himself hitting that child on several occasions. The videos found on his phone by his girlfriend after he left it behind in at least one of those videos. Investigators say he was seen hitting the child with full force. They say she had visible bruises and scratches on her face. He's now facing two counts of injury to a child. The case of a missing woman confirmed to be dead coming to a standstill. A severed head was found in Louisiana three years ago, and now it's been positively identified as Sally Hines. She was reported missing out of San Antonio in 2018. A month after she disappeared, the Cameron Paris Sheriff's Office in Louisiana says jail trustees came across the head in a marshy area that was known to be a dumping ground for bodies. They believe that these gators here, that we have an abundant supply of gators, will come eat these bodies or these body parts. This was a murder for sure. There was no uh, accident. In 
The Cameron Parish Sheriff Ron Johnson says Hines has no record of living in Louisiana and she has no family ties there, leading him to believe she was killed in San Antonio. He says he plans on turning over all this information to SAPD. We did reach out to SAPD about the investigation and they tell us homicides are usually handled by the agency where the remains are found. Back here at home, a man is recovering after he was shot in the leg this afternoon. This happened in the 8600 block of Spoonbill Court near Highway 151 and Cable Ranch Road. San Antonio police say the man was taken to University Hospital. Two people who ran from the scene were detained. In the meantime, San Antonio police are looking for a man they say stabbed a woman last night. It happened just after midnight in the 1200 block of Calabria, not far from Woodlawn Lake. They say that woman was walking when she was approached by the suspect who solicited her for sex. They say the woman tried to get away, but he caught up to her and stabbed her multiple times. At last check, that woman was in critical condition. San Antonio police also hoping to crack a 2018 murder. Brian Walker fatally shot on the west side in June of 2018. He was found in the parking lot of Valentino Food Mart at the corner of Chihuahua and Hamilton Streets. If you have any information, you're being asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And investigators also need your help tracking down these people. They're accused of stealing $300,000 worth of weapons, jewelry, and sentimental items from a north side storage facility. This is surveillance video uh, footage taken from the extra space storage on 281 in Brook Hollow back on March 12th. Five people are accused of loading up a U-Haul with two safes. Crime Stoppers also looking for tips on this one. Again, the number to call 210-224-7867. Memorial Day marks the unofficial start of summer, and it's the first major holiday since some mask mandates have been lifted, with 40% of the country fully vaccinated. Nadia Romero explains why the Biden administration wants Americans to remember, though, the pandemic is not over. Oh, man, it feels great. Minneapolis traveler Ricardo Walters says he's fully vaccinated and making his first trip since the pandemic began. No concerns at all. I had some friends that traveled uh, a couple of weeks ago and they say, hey, Rick, you know, it's OK to get out and go. And I sure jumped on it. It's what AAA is calling revenge travel. People were able to save a lot of money because they weren't traveling to work last year. And so they're going to places they're staying longer and doing more things and spending more money. While the pandemic isn't over, the numbers in the U.S. look promising, with half of American adults fully vaccinated. <laughs> President Joe Biden traveling to Virginia to tout progress against COVID-19. Nationwide, CDC data shows 10 states reached the Biden administration's goal of vaccinating at least 70 percent of adults with at least one dose. So many joys of life, large and small, have been halted by a long, dark winter. And today... We've gone from 184 cases per day nationwide to fewer than 22 cases, 22,000 cases per day. Deaths have dropped by over 85 percent. The president preaching cautious optimism as many states lift mask mandates and some restaurants and beaches back to full capacity with Americans eager to enjoy a normal holiday weekend. But let me be clear, we're not done yet. We have to reach those who are not vaccinated and make it as easy as possible for them to get protected. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. And something else to keep in mind this weekend, click it or ticket. Text.sapd and the Bear County Sheriff's Office will all be enforcing that annual campaign all weekend long. And this year, they're taking a harder approach. Samuel King joins us now live from the north side with details on this year's extra effort. Samuel. Hey, Ursula and Tim, this is taking on added urgency this year because last year there was actually an increase in the number of people killed in crashes, but they were not wearing seatbelts. So law enforcement is going to be out and about this weekend and through next week looking for people who aren't wearing those restraints and those who don't have their children properly restrained in child seats. TxDOT says in San Antonio last year there were 63 crashes in which people had fatal or serious injuries. Those crashes resulted in 21 deaths and 47 people seriously injured. TxDOT's Laura Lopez says those numbers are concerning. That's just so disappointing to us because it's, it's extremely important and it's such a simple task. And in Texas, the driver and all passengers are required to wear seatbelts. If you're caught without one, you could face a $200 fine. 
All children under eight years old must be in a safe child safety or booster seat unless they're taller than four feet, nine inches to find their $250. Now, TxDOT actually launched the Click It or Ticket campaign back in the early 2000s. And they say it's resulted in an increase in seatbelt usage across the state from 78% to 91%. This year's campaign runs through June 6th. Live in San Antonio, Samuel King, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Samuel. Let's hope there's a lot of compliance this weekend. And by the way, Samuel's going to be joining us daily on the News at 5 starting next week, bringing you the latest on transportation developments in our viewing area. And again, thank you, Samuel. Still ahead of the news at five, the price of chicken wings has been pushed up, way up. Suppliers are facing a shortage and customers are eating the cost. What's led to the drop in supply and what to expect in the months ahead? That's coming up next. But first, for more than 40 years, our good friend and colleague Paul Venema has called San Antonio and KSAT 12 home. Every day you could expect to see him at the courthouse reporting about the latest trial here. And through those years, he made a lot of friends there and some wanted to wish him well as he heads into retirement. We all know how long the evaluation will take. Jones' trial is set for July, but that likely will change. Paul's a courthouse fixture, and so we're, we're going to miss him. So before I met him personally, um, you know, I thought he was like a Hollywood star at that level. And so then to have met him um, and establish a friendship with him, he is just the very, a very humble person. You know, I started uh, watching Paul uh, when he was the anchor of 12 Star Final when I was in grade school. No, I, I, <laughs> I kid, but, uh, <laughs> but. I remember him, believe it or not, uh, watching him back in the day, I guess it was in the 70s, when he used to have a fro, an afro. The first reaction I got when I opened up the jury door room to thank them for their service was joy and excitement for actually seeing Paul Venema in the courtroom. It didn't really make any difference uh, which side you were on. Uh, you were his friend, and uh, he loved to talk to you, and I loved to talk to him. I knew that I would always get fair and accurate reporting from him. It has been my pleasure to be able to look out there in that last row and see Paul Venema. And I think it is a huge loss to our, to our criminal court community. You're gonna be missed in the courthouse, but you're not gonna be a stranger, and we will see you soon. Congratulations, well-deserved. Paul Venema, I'm gonna miss you, but I think I know your address, and I ne definitely know I have your phone number, so I'm still gonna bug you. It's not gonna be the same without him, uh, but I certainly, uh, Wish him happy retirement. Paul, God bless you. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for being our friend. New at five, the rising price of chicken. It's costing more than hen scratch these days, and that's definitely ruffling some feathers. Restaurants that serve up wings and more are hit especially hard. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz says you can blame the tight supplies on a number of factors, but mostly it's because the pandemic has a supply chain all out of whack. The lunch rush is on at Wayne's Wings, and the orders are flying. But for owner Dwayne Price, chicken costs are plucking his profit margin. The prices have skyrocketed. Some of the suppliers are also limiting the amounts that we can buy. So he's had to raise his menu prices. The increase in the price, it affects not just me, it affects the customers, like, mainly. And, um, you know, that's what... That's what's hurting us right now. It's so what happened to all the chicken? Turns out it's another pandemic effect. The supply just isn't keeping pace with our appetite. What we'd like to have is more. Agriculture economist Dr. David Anderson says the pandemic forced some processors to cut production. And now all of a sudden we've got, gosh, the economy's growing. People are getting out there, going back to restaurants and everybody likes chicken wings and chicken breasts are everywhere with, you know, the breaded chicken sandwiches. A surge in demand goosed prices up. A year ago, the wholesale price for a pound of wings was $1.69, now $3.35. Breasts that were $1.44 a pound are now $2.25. Higher prices are the signal to make more chickens. Mm -hmm. And 
quite honestly, it's, you know, it's biology. It just takes some time. Adding to the challenge, labor shortages and high feed prices. As for your groceries, Anderson says the stores have plenty of chicken, but expect higher prices. And for this business owner, he's focused on keeping his customers. And while the cost of chicken is sky high, he may just have to wing it. Maybe we should do some seafood, you know. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Oh, that looks so good. Mm -hmm. But my cholesterol level went up just looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> raining a in some, shot outside. Yeah, but it's raining in some places, isn't it? And we're starting to see a few showers sprout up here and there, and I think we'll see increasing activity on the radar screen as we go ahead through the next few hours. So storm chances this evening and into the nighttime hours, a few weekend rain chances. Overall, though, the weekend, humid, not too hot, actually running a few degrees below average for high temperatures and more gray than blue in the sky. Not a weekend washout, just a few rain chances here and there. OK, let's get right to it. Here we go. Severe thunderstorm watch. That's until 11 p.m. for locations west and north of San Antonio. Everybody within those yellow counties that includes Edwards County and even Valverde County. That's where we have the main potential for the strongest severe storms. However, that could change in the hours ahead as things evolve. OK, take a look at our satellite and radar. You see the watch boxes shown in yellow here. Widespread thunderstorm activity developing, especially off to the north of us, even to the west as well in West Texas. We're watching this location north of town, closer to Austin and even Waco. And then in West Texas and Mexico, we're watching that activity as well, because both of those could send some storms our way. And we are anticipating even some more development here around town in the hours ahead. So let's take a look at the radar close up here and what's actually happening. The most recent development has been basically in Kerr County, not far from Comfort. I know Comfort's not in Kerr County, but still. In Kirk County Center Point over toward Comfort, a little bit of development. That's a heavy downpour there right over Center Point, pushing off to the north. There isn't a whole lot of activity that's popped up right now, but now that we have the sunshine and our sky is gradually, our atmosphere is destabilizing, I think our odds start to rise over the coming hours in terms of more scattered showers and thunderstorms uh, basically picking up out there. Here's the motion. Put it in put it in motion and east of town along the I-10 corridor, especially just south of I-10. We've had some pop up showers sprout up here and there over the past couple of hours. They've just had a hard time really sustaining themselves. But as we go through the evening, as I mentioned, I think our odds go up a little bit more. Not everybody's going to get it, but they should become scattered in nature. Here's a future cast I like. This is the same model that I referenced uh, last time we had a similar situation. And I think it handles it pretty well. It just overdoes it a bit. So I think it's a little more aggressive than what we'll actually see on the radar. But it gives you that timeline, say 7, 8 o'clock, a little more development out here. Don't pay close attention to the exact placement, OK? This right here that it shows over San Antonio could very well just be over Bandera and not San Antonio. But look at the coverage across South Texas, 9 o'clock. Then we get into 10, 11 o'clock. Some of that action from West Texas could be moving into our western counties along the Rio Grande. And again, there is that potential for some of those severe storms. Then we get into tomorrow morning, clouds, maybe a sprinkle. Again, a few rain chances this weekend, but not a washout. We'll get to that forecast in a moment. 86 right now, dew point of 71. Sticky outside, very sticky. East southeasterly breeze, re re reinforcing that humidity. 94 in Del Rio. We're 88 in Gonzales, 91 in Pleasanton, 94 currently in Catula, near 80 in Kerrville. This evening, we're giving it a 40% chance scattered in nature. If we see some more development, I may be even increasing those odds by 6 o'clock. Okay, we're going to keep an eye on the radar. Really, the next couple of hours is going to tell us a lot. And then we get into tomorrow, start the day with low clouds, maybe a sprinkle. Can't rule out an isolated pop-up shower or thunderstorm, probably garden variety by Saturday afternoon. Otherwise, 70 in the morning tomorrow, 85 in the afternoon, some breaks in the clouds later in the day. And then as we get on into Sunday, looking just variable cloud cover, you know, mostly cloudy, some breaks in those clouds. Look at that low to mid 80s for high temperatures Saturday, Sunday and Memorial Day. Also on Memorial Day, we can't rule out a stray pop up shower again. Not an all weekend rain, just some minor chances here and there, but better chances as we get back to work and some people back to school even next week for, for a few, right? Most kids are out, but some still have school next week. Thank you, Adam.
Not a lot of love between the Lakers and Suns <laughs> in their playoff matchup. We've seen lots of bodies flying, sure. LeBron flopping, and lots of tempers flaring. Yeah, and it happened again last night. And it, it took place when the Lakers actually snuffed out a Suns attempted comeback late in that game when they went on a 9-0 run. When we come back, things got a little frustrating last night. And is this a dirty play? According to one player, it was. And more fans banned for their bad playoff behavior. Coming up. After seeing the win on the road in Phoenix, the seven-seeded Los Angeles Lakers have taken the lead in their best-of-seven first-round playoff series against the second-seeded Phoenix Suns after a win at home last night. Turning point came in the third quarter when the Lakers took control. LeBron James started attacking the rim to finish at 21. Anthony Davis delivered another strong performance with 34 points and 11 rebounds. That combination accounted for 28 of the Lakers' 33 points in the third period, outscored the Suns by 10. The scoring a combined 65 points in the first two games of the series. The Suns' Devin Booker was held to just 19 thanks to the defense of Contavious caldwell Pope, who had to lead the game in the third quarter after colliding with Booker, suffering a bruised left quad. The frustration Booker felt spilled over when he shoved in a Schroeder while he was in the air, picking up a flagrant two, ejected from the game late in the fourth quarter. Right behind him was Jay Crowder, who was given the heave as well for drawing with Schroeder. And the Lakers get their first home playoff win since 2012, 109-95, lead the series two games to one. After the game, Davis called Booker's shove a dirty play. We can't uh, allow, you know, plays like that to happen just to push a guy out there, you know, two hands, um, whether it was out of frustration or not. Uh, it's a scary play. And, you know, luckily Dennis is, Dennis is all right. But, um, you know, sometimes it could, you know, end badly, you know, for a player, you know. Um, so, you know, we, we don't want to, you know, let the chirping lead to something like that. After giving up a game at home, the Denver Nuggets returned the favor by beating the Blazers in Portland in Game 3 of the NBA playoffs, take a two-game-to-one lead in that best-of-seven first-round series, and they did it by beating the Blazers at their own game from the three-point line. They held arguably the best backcourt in the business, Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum, to a combined 8 of 26 from beyond the arc, and the team to just 31 percent. In the meantime, the Nuggets went off from long range, hitting almost 53 percent of their long balls, led by Austin Rivers, who was 5 out of 10 from three-point range. In fact, with the game tied at 91 all with less than five minutes to play. Rivers hit the first of four consecutive threes to seal the 120 to 115 victory. After the game, Rivers gave his head coach Michael Malone credit for giving him the green light. Coach just tells me when I get in there, he's like, I need you to be aggressive. I need you to look to score. Uh, so when you when you got your head coach telling you that, I mean, at that point, your eyes just light up. I mean, that's the best thing any player can hear is that their coach wants you to shoot the ball. So you go out there and you shoot with confidence and, you know, um, you just keep going. And three Jazz fans have been banned indefinitely for making vulgar and racist comments to Ja Morant's parents during Game 2 Wednesday night in Utah. This is getting out of hand as they allow more fans back. Some things have happened in New York just recently, and also a fan who was banned in Philadelphia for pouring popcorn all over Russell Westbrook. So much bad behavior. Yes, they're going to aggressively enforce the fan behavior code of conduct now. Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is next. We'll see you back here at 6 with Steve and Essex. Have a good evening.